Hi, it's me again. It's your girl, Sonali Ray. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this channel. I'm coming today with a little bit more information on merchant seamanship, specifically with the Department of Defense uh, Navy. I am, as some of you may know, a civilian sailor. I've been with the company called MSC for 10 years now. Um, I want to go on record as saying that this is not sponsored. They don't even know I'm about to do this. They don't know I'm doing this. Um, but I just think it's important that you guys know what you're getting into. Nobody told me this stuff prior to me getting in here. And a lot of things have changed. So the purpose of me even being here and letting you know what's up is you need to know what's up. One, you need to know that this is an adult job opportunity for some people, but nothing is without flaws. So who better to tell you than somebody that's in it? So here we go. Outside of their prerequisites in order to become a merchant seaman, what do we talk about? You need a passport. You need something called an MMC. Um, there are steps to get both. There are requirements to get both. And it is a bit of an investment in order to become a merchant seaman. So let's let's get, make sure that you guys know that it's clear. Um, once you obtain those things, you also are going to need a medical card. It's associated with MMC. So once you look into that, go ahead. And if you need more information on that, um, you can send me an inbox. Uh, I will have a Patreon up soon so that I can give you the details that I'm not permitted to necessarily say here on this platform, rules. Uh, you also are going to need what's called a TWIC card. TWIC stands for Transportation Workers Identification Credential, okay? You're gonna need that too in order to become a sailor with the Department of Defense. I don't know what it's like to work for certain unions, you know, and privatized companies, I'm not quite sure. But if you want to, um, if you want to be a part of the government, this is what's required of you, okay? So Crystal or Sonali, what is what's what is a typical day, right? Um, well, you are required to go to what we call a pool. That means you are ready for an assignment. You're ready to go. You you have to be in a fit for duty status, meaning you don't have it. You're not sick. You don't have any um, hangups. Um, you've cleared everything that you need to clear. Um, also, I want to make sure that you know that you are you need to be able to acquire and maintain a security clearance. Okay, that's important. If you cannot get a security clearance for one thing, reason or another, you are not going to be able to work with us. It's just what it is. <laughs> um, I've seen people get pulled off of ships because of clearance issues. I've seen people, you know, not get the job whatsoever because of clearance issues. Not to put a damper on anybody's parade. Just because you may have gotten in trouble doesn't mean that you um, can't have a job with us. That's not true. I've worked alongside people who have been in trouble um, to include jail time. And they still work for the government, make a great living, turn their life around. Amazing time. Um, really great stories. So just just wanted to throw that little add that little piece to it now back to a typical day so you are going into what we call a pool It's separated by two different coasts we have one on the east coast we have one on the west coast and you go to the pool and you await an assignment provided you don't require any training because we do a lot of trainings um, provided you don't need any vaccinations because we you do have to get vaccinated that's something you guys got to consider provided you don't need any of those that means you're in a ready-to-go status so hypothetically it's supposed to be a ready uh, first in first out scenario but i'm gonna tell y'all the truth it's not a first in and first out all the time though it should be <laughs> sometimes and i'm gonna be honest with you we have handlers your handler is the person that gives you your ship assignment that's the person that says hey you are in this position and this position is needed on this ship in this country now so that's where you're gonna go so your handler um, is the difference between a good ship and a bad ship. And let me just be clear, they know it. <laughs> they know it. And you, hopefully this doesn't happen to you guys, but sometimes you get handlers that hate the job and can't stand you either and they don't even know you. But don't look at it as why she don't like me or why he don't like me. Just do the job if you can. You know, and I say that, trust me, trust me. <laughs> I can't, you know, I'm, I am not going to pretend like I am a... How do I say this without looking terrible? It's not like I haven't had um, some exchanges with my detailer. That would be a lie. 
but I'm always on the up and up and I'm on the right. See, the thing, the difference between me and people that just fly off the handle is I'm always in compliance. I know what I'm talking about. I know the procedure. If you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know the procedure, why would they listen to you? It's easier to run over you when you don't know what you need to know. That's why I always show you, and I don't have it handy right now, but I always show you the rule book. Know the rule book. Forgive me if there are any children on here, but you have to cover your ass, okay? <laughs> you need to cover yourself and be very thorough, all right? Um, one important thing that you definitely need to know is you should be ready to go. Don't give anybody any reason to um, get you in trouble, uh, meaning if they give you an assignment, you missed a, you missed a plane. <laughs> or, you know, you missed a ship. As long as it's of no fault of your own, you're fine. But you want to make sure that you are on the up and up and in the right of things, okay? So I am not going to take up too much more of your time. Uh, again, when you get into MSC, once you've um, satisfied all of the requirements to do so, make sure that you are ready to go in a ready to go status and i'm not going to tell you to kiss nobody's butt as far as your detail is but those are the people that give you your assignments okay and then understand this federal employment you are on probation you are in a probation status for 365 days okay that means you can get fired for anything and nothing at all all right so, um there are some um I'm not going to say loopholes, but as a federal employment you, employee, you do have some rights. So say you have proof that somebody was doing something. It could be harassment, discrimination, any of that. Those are prohibited from personnel practices under the EEOC law. So I'm again, this channel is going to cover a whole lot, but please bear with me because in a couple weeks, I have to go back to duty status, which means I have to be ready to get back on the ship, just like I'm telling you guys you're going to have to do too. So... <sighs> I've been off for a while, but it's time to return to work. So I want to make sure that I am being able to, I'm doing everything that I'm about to tell you to do. You know what I'm saying? To include making sure what resources you have in order to protect yourself in the event that something should happen that's beyond your control, especially if you're new hire. All right. Make sure you know who the office of special counsel is. Make sure you know the rules and practices um, for EEOC. Also, you will have a union represent, representative uh, for both East and West Coast because MSC is, is the, it's one company, but it occupies more than one coast, okay? East Coast, West Coast. East Coast is in Virginia, West Coast is in California, all right? Make sure you know who the union reps are. Um, on a personal note, though, I don't recommend the union. Um have they intervened on my behalf before? Yes. Was a success um, for me? Yes. But I didn't, I actually didn't do anything and I could approve, I had approved for everything um, that I was going through at that time. So I didn't violate anything. They just was there to validate everything that I already had provided, if that makes sense. If you are in an EEOC case, meaning somebody has violated one of the EEOC, EEOC um, things, then you need to make sure that you know what they are to include age, sex, religion. Um, it's a couple more. Thoroughly know what they are and know what that means because um, there is a difference between private sector, meaning people who go to work nine to five, you know, at home, versus federal employees. Private sector, you got 120 days, I believe, to report wrongdoing. Federal, you don't. You only get about 50 days, 50 to 54 days, something like that. And I think it may be 45. So you need to look into that. But you don't have a long time frame to say something. You have to speak up if that's something that bothers you. But make sure you have proof. So I recommend writing things down to include location, parties involved, what was said, um, and time. Okay, the time, the date, time, location, what was said, all that. And I promise you, it is going to help you in the long run. You are going to need all of that because those are questions that they're going to ask. If you pursue an EEOC case, it's important, important, important to be thorough. Okay, and I say that because I have EEOC cases. Um, 
I can't get into detail with it now because I do have legal representation. Also, find a federal attorney. If you are going to work for the federal government, and if you are in the federal government, specifically in this arena, make sure you have adequate representation, okay? Find an attorney that is unafraid of going against the government. Okay, because it's important to have adequate representation. That can mean the difference between yes and no. All right. And then you'll know legally what's supposed to happen. And they're a lot more thorough um, with what you need to know moving forward than what your company is going to train you for. Because think about it. Why would they train you to go against them? You are going to get trained, you know, and they're going to tell you stuff by law. They have to, but they're not going to necessarily make it in depth or as clear as you may need it to be. But if you hire, spend the hundred dollar fee or whatever the retain, not the retainer, but yeah, the consult fee, pay the consult fee and ask your questions. <laughs> Just do that because it's important. I don't want to put a shadowy cloud over this, but I don't want you to come in here blind because no one told me these things. These are such, 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 such important stuff um, that will help you in the long run. Okay. Learn your chain of command. <laughs> Learn who is above this person, who's above that person, who's above that person, who's above that person, who's, you know, all the way to the top. Learn that. Because if you don't, you have no power. You're just, it's just crying wolf. You don't want to be the person that cry wolf. Trust me. They do not get respect out there. So um, that's all I'm going to say for today. I will be back hopefully soon. I'm about to do some traveling. And I myself, again, I'm getting ready to return to work. So if you are already out there, see you in the fleet. And if you're trying to get out here with us let me know because i actually know some people that could help you um, on your journey to not necessarily expedite but it can clear it up for you so i am sonali ray and i am saying bye <laughs>